everybody welcome back to my channel so in this video I'm going to be going through how I draw a face and this time I'm going to be going through how to draw it from scratch using all of the basic proportions and I'm also then going to be showing you how I would ink it and how I'd shade it in as well so let me know if you want to see more sort of videos like this where I do it from scratch and take you through the whole process but anyway guys let's get started Okay, so the first thing that I do when I'm drawing the face is I create two markings to represent the basic size that I want the face to be. So the top marking represents the top of the head and the bottom one is where I want the bottom of the face to kind of lie. So this gives me a rough guideline of how to draw my oval shape. I don't really stick strictly into these guidelines, but it acts as a guide. And then I draw a nice oval shape for the head. And once I've got that oval in, I just erase bits and adjust it to make sure that I get the size of the head how I want it to be. You can experiment with this because you can have lots of different shaped heads depending on what your character to look like. So make sure you experiment with that. Once you've got your oval down, split it in half vertically and then do the same horizontally. And then with that bottom half, split that in half again and then that lower quarter, split that in half again. Now to add a hairline, I just create a nice curve shape just below the top of the head and I keep that parallel to the top of the head as well. So moving on to the features, the first thing that I do is I create a guideline for the eyes. And so you'll want it to be in five equal sections. And so what I do is I create a little dot for the tear duct and just two oval shapes on the top and bottom to create sort of a guideline where the eyes are going to be, but I don't go in super detail at the moment. Now on that sort of middle line on the lower half, that's where the nose is going to be. So get in your nose. I've got lots of tutorials where I just go through how to draw a nose and I can do more if you want that. But this video is more about the basic proportions. So the eyes go on that first half line and then the nose rests on the second one. When you're doing the eyebrows, I like to do it straight up from the inner corner and then go slightly slanted from the outer corner because the eyebrows rest slightly further away from the outer part of the eye. And I do a nice curve shape, but again, with eyebrows, you can experiment with them depending on what expression you want your character to have. But just make sure you get the basic guidelines of where they're meant to be. So just put them a bit above the eyes. You don't have to do them really far above the eyes unless you want to go for a surprise look. But like I said, experiment with this. Now onto the mouth. So the mouth is halfway through the iris about, so I like to draw a line down and also the nose rests about in line with the inner corners of the eyes as well. So do two lines from the like middle of the iris and then do two dots and that's where the outer part of your mouth is going to be. And then the mouth basically consists of these curve shapes on the top and the bottom and I like to make the bottom mouth rest just a bit below that bottom line that we drew in. But again, you can experiment with this and the placement depending on whether you want your characters to have a bit more of a cupid's bow or whether you want their mouth to be closer to their nose. You can kind of adjust these proportions a little bit to make your characters look unique. So I then also drew a little line on the bottom of the mouth just to indicate where sort of that chin and that shadow is going to be just below the mouth. So now let's adjust the features a bit more. Once you've blocked them all in, it's just about getting them in really. And then you can adjust the shape and make it really unique to how you want it to be. So I fixed the nose shape a little bit. It's okay if you have to keep erasing it, but I really make sure that you do your sketch really lightly. Make sure you do it lightly because then you can erase the lines without seeing your kind of previous versions of it underneath. For this tutorial, I tried to keep it so you could see it, but in reality, I would have done this a lot lighter and I recommend you do your sketch lighter as well. Once you're happy with the placement of your features, go ahead and erase the guidelines before you go into too much detail on the face. Try and get them nice and erased. Now let's move on to the hair. I'm gonna be doing another tutorial on drawing hair, so I'm not gonna to go too much into it, but the important things to remember are go from that hairline. So where your hair stems from, make sure it kind of graduates from that hairline and try to keep it nice and wavy, keep it flowy. Do it in terms of clumps rather than trying to draw lots of individual hair strands because this will give it much more volume if you do it in terms of clumps. And think about the hairstyle that you want your character to have and you can adjust it. 
And the main tip that I have is to make sure the hair goes a little bit above that headline that you created. So the top of the head, the hair would expand a little bit above it. And again, this makes it look more natural. It's not going to stick really strictly to your headline. It's gonna go a bit around it and it also might curve a bit into the face as well. So make sure that you get your hair looking nice and natural by making it flow really nicely. So now let's add a bit more detail to the features. So I'm working on the eyes first and I just colored in the eyebrows a little bit as well. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna kind of fix anything that you want to. So I'm just fixing the eyebrows. I realized that I wanted them a little bit higher up. So you can experiment with things until you get the look that you want. Don't be afraid to erase things and redraw them. Don't be afraid that it's gonna look worse and you're too scared to like change anything. Just experiment and you might get something even more that you like. So I wanted them a bit higher up and a bit more curved and it's okay to keep adjusting until you get it right. That's why keep your sketch really light is so important in order so that you can do all of these little changes. So I just erased some more of those guidelines and now I'm gonna really get into rendering those features a bit more to make it look a little bit more realistic and just to give it a bit more shading. So first I just wanna adjust the kind of shape of the face. So again, just erasing those lines and I wanted to give it more of a natural look to the chin rather than it just being that really smooth oval, just add a little bit of shape for the chin and I'm just fixing the cupid's bow. I wanna make sure that I'm fixing everything that I want to in terms of the structure and like the shape of every feature before I go in and shade it. Because if I was to shade it and then realize that I don't like the shape of something, then it'd be much harder to try and erase all of that dark shading. I'm also erasing the guideline for the head that's in the hair as well, so that we can just see the hair. We don't wanna see that curved shape of the head throughout the hair as well. So make sure that you erase all of your guidelines before you go in and try to shade everything. So I'm gonna be showing you how I'd shade it using pencil, and then I'm going to be inking it and showing you how I'd shade it, like you see me do with like my sketch with me drawing videos. So let's go on with the eye. The first thing that I did was I kind of indicated where that pupil would be. I darken up the upper eyelid and the lower sort of lash line. And I also go ahead and add a few little eyelashes as well. Also make sure to create like an upper crease of the eyelid. So that upper crease, make sure you get that in because that will really make it look a bit more natural, a bit more sort of realistic and make it look more accurate. Try to include that. And I did the same with the other eye. It can be tricky to get them looking the same, but just keep practicing. And remember, they don't have to look exactly the same. A lot of faces aren't perfectly symmetrical. So if it looks a little bit different, that's okay. Most people's eyes look a tiny bit different, but make sure that they're not super like off, that you don't want them too slanted, or the irises different sizes or one more open than the other, try to keep it as close as possible. I also think about where I want my shadows to be. I want the main shadows to be sort of on the left hand side. So I create some shading underneath the nose and on the top lip as well. Normally the top lip is a bit darker than the bottom one. And for the bottom lip, it tends to be more shaded at the bottom part of that bottom lip. So now I wanna go on to just rendering the hair a bit more. I just really want to pull out the key sort of shapes that I'll be inking later, because at the moment there's a lot of these different lines. So I just wanna pull out the main ones that I'm going to be following and really just give it a darker sort of sketch so that you guys can see it a bit better. And for this whole thing, all I'm using is a HB pencil, so a normal everyday school pencil, and I'm literally just using printer paper. So there's absolutely no reason why you guys can't get something very similar to this because I'm not using any fancy drawing supplies. I'm keeping it really simple for you guys that are beginners and you haven't got many like art supplies to work with. This is basically using supplies you can get around your house and that you all pretty much have at your disposal. So again, just fixing any little bits that I want to. Just wanna get it right. And I'm basically showing you now how you can adjust the features of the face and make them look different while still like using these proportions to make it look accurate. 
Like you can get so many different facial feature shapes, but it will still look accurate because it's still in those proportions. As long as you make the eyes look the equal distance apart, you make the nose line up with the inner corner of the eye and you make the mouth line up with the middle part of the eye, then it's going to look accurate. You can adjust sort of the width of the eyes, like the height of the eyes, how much of the iris you can see, the nose shape, the mouth shape, how full you want it. You can adjust the features, but make sure they stick within this sort of proportion guidelines. That will really help you make sure that it looks realistic and like accurate. So a lot of the time when you guys send me your work in for critique, the main problem that I see you have is your proportions because you don't really follow these simple guidelines. But if you do, then it will instantly improve your work so much quicker just by following and realizing you guys might not have known these guidelines of where like each of the feature is relevant to the other features. So you can see I'm just adjusting the mouth and the chin now. I just wanted to make it look a little bit prettier, really. I just wanted to make the lips look a bit more curved and not so thick on the top. But soon I'm going to be inking it in and just adding a few little flyaway bits of hair over the face. I really like to add some hair over the face just to make it look a bit more natural and so that the hairstyle isn't so uniformed. So now let's get on to the inking process. For this, I'm just using a normal like fine liner by Faber-Castell. You can use anything you want. And what I like to do is I just like to pick out the basic guidelines for the eyes. I don't like shade with the pen. I just basically go over the lines around the eyes, the eyebrows. I just make some markings for the direction that the eyebrows are going in. I do the nostrils. You can do the sides of the nose or not, it's up to you. And for the mouth, I don't do the top the top sort of lid because this is a lot lighter but I do the middle and a bit of the bottom as well. I'm going to go around the chin, the neck and I'm also going to be inking in the hair. One thing that I didn't mention is that the neck kind of starts just a bit inside those outer edges of the face so just start it a little bit within the edge of the head and then just go down and curve it out. So with the inking process, you want to try and make sure that you're doing it mostly in one continuous line. You don't want to take your pen too much off the paper when you're like inking a line. Really just let it flow. It doesn't have to stick rigidly to the sketch that you did. These can just act as guidelines. Try to keep it really natural and really flowy. And for hair, it's really nice to have those nice fluid curved lines. So try not to start and stop because then if you do start and stop a lot through like doing one strand of hair, it's just not going to look really nice and fluid. Mostly it's just going to look really sort of clunky and you'll be able to tell where you start and stopped it. So I liked to thicken up some of the lines normally just to make the main clump stand out a bit more and I like to add a little bit of detail to show the direction of the hair just to give it more volume and once I've done the whole inking process I go throughout and I just erase the initial sketch. Once you've inked it in you don't want to see all of that sketch underneath and you can see I've basically inked all of the main areas apart from that upper lip but because I apply quite a lot of pressure you can still sort of see the ghost of where that upper lip is. So now that I've done the inking process I like to go in and shade it a little bit just to add, make it look a little bit more sort of full and accurate and more like realistic to an extent. So the only supplies that I'm using for this is my HB pencil that I used to sketch it out and a blending stump. And I'm also going to be using a black coloured pencil, but you don't have to use that if you don't want to. And I basically just lay down a bit of the pencil and blend it with the blending stump, or I just go straight in with that blending stump and add some shading. And I'm just thinking about the areas that are going to be the most contoured in the face. So just below the nose is normally quite shadowed and a bit on the sides of the nose. There's quite a bit of shading on the upper part of the lip and like I said for the bottom lip it tends to be that highlighted part in the middle of the bottom lip. I also like to add some shading around the head so kind of where the hair is covering up the face there's going to be some shading there and what I noticed was using this blending stump on the printing paper was actually really smooth and it was really nice. So the smoother your paper is the, the more smooth your shading is going to be. Just below the chin, so on that neck part, there's going to be a shadow cast from the chin and the bottom of the face, so kind of like 
on below that jawline and there's also going to be a shadow just below the mouth as well and I kind of created the look of where the shadow around the chin would be. So the main areas to keep nice and light is the middle of the forehead, under the eyes, the kind of middle of the nose and the tip of the nose and sort of that main part of the chin as well and just above the cupid's bow and like that little middle part of the lips. But this depends on the angle that you're doing it from, the light source. So I really recommend using a reference photo if you want to make it look nice and accurate. You want to do lots of shading, but you want your shading to still be like accurate. You want the shadows to be in the right place. Then you can still use a reference photo just to figure out where the shadows would be cast in that certain position that you want your character to be in. For the darker shadows like the pupils and a bit around the sides of the face, I use a black colour pencil just to add more depth to make it really stand out. And again, you can blend the Polychromos pencil with the stump a bit as well. And you don't have to clean the stump, you can just use that straight over it. And what I'll like to do then is just make sure that I raise any bits away from the hair that I wanted. And I'll also create a few highlights. So you can use the eraser to make sure that every areas that you want to be most highlighted are nice and clean. So like those areas that I told you before, you might accidentally smudge a bit of the pencil into these areas. So you can just go in with a kneaded eraser or just a regular eraser and make sure those areas are nice and clean. I'm adding some more of the subtle shadows now. I also go ahead and I do shade in the hair, but I don't show this part. I'm going to be doing another tutorial showing how I draw this type of hair, how I colour it and ink it. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on that video because that's going to be coming out tomorrow I think. So yes, yeah, stay tuned for that one. I'm really excited about that. So the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a white gel pen and just use this to create all of the shiny highlights. So for example, I'm creating some highlights within the eyes, so like the tear ducts on a bit of that pupil area and a bit on the waterline as well and on the sort of white of the eye and I create a few little highlights on the top lip and sort of the chin, middle of the forehead and it's up to you where you want to place these kind of highlights depending on your lighting source, that's really important. But that is basically it for this tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you do want to see more of these sort of basic proportion tutorials because I loved making this one actually. It was really fun to make and I'd love making more of these sort of things. Do you want to see more of like a basic proportions, an accurate drawing but more of a realistic type of drawing because this is quite stylized but obviously the proportions apply to realistic drawing even though this was quite stylized. Like all of the guidelines and proportions that I explained they would apply in like a really realistic drawing but let me know if you want to see the same sort of video but me drawing a really accurate portrait so I hope you enjoyed the video if you want to see more drawing tutorials then I've got lots of real-time drawing tutorials on my patreon where I go through how to draw really accurate portraits in color pencil graphite pencil charcoal using lots of mediums like markers and I show you how to draw animals so make sure to check that out if you enjoyed the tutorial make sure to give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time bye guys